Hey folks, how you doing? My name is Luke and this is another episode of Behind the Frame. I'm going to take my watch off because it makes a lot of noise on the table. Case in point. Um, So yeah, this is a series that myself, along with the rest of the Wild Eye team, guiding team that is, um, do once a month in order to show you guys just how we go about editing our photographs from various places, various species. And this week, I'm going to be doing a photograph of an animal in a big environment. So stick around if you'd like to learn a little bit more about photo editing, wildlife photography, and just basically being on safari. Right, so as I said, this is a photograph of an animal in a big environment, and this is the shot that I have for you all today. Now this shot comes from the Lower Zambezi National Park in the Winterthorn Forests. Um, we were staying at a wonderful camp last year called Old Mandora, um, and we had a fantastic time. Now, if you are looking for a stunning environment, a foresty environment that has cats in it, has elephants, buffalo, water buck, wild dogs, all sorts of things, then this is most definitely the place for you. It is a super adventurous safari destination. Um, there are uh, canoe options, fishing options, getting on the Zambezi, getting on the channels of the Zambezi, it is amazing. But really, um, what is fantastic about this place is the forest and obviously driving around that forest, looking for cats, looking for leopards, and there is a good density of leopards in that place. Um, in the Winterthorn part of uh, the Lower Zambezi National Park, there is a strange happening with leopards there. Um, sometimes you can have four leopards, five leopards in one sighting, which is pretty cool. A real leap of leopards, which doesn't happen uh, very hof- often in very many places. Um, but yeah, there's one small part of the forest um, where there's kind of this uh, leopardess. She's got her two cubs. The cubs have cubs. There's a big male that rocks up every once in a while. There's another territorial leopardess. They all seem to live fairly peacefully, which is quite strange. Um, Awesome though, if you're on safari and you like leopards and even better if you like to photograph them. Anyway, let's jump back into the photograph and chat about it now. um, This is a leopardess by the name of Pinky. um, And uh, yeah, she's quite a character. She puts on a good show, um, you know, basically every time you see her. Now this is one of the daughters. She does have a sister. I think they call her Pretty, Pretty and Pinky. I can't remember anymore. Um, But yeah, they are both very, very nice cats. And there actually was um, a couple of shots of them together lazing on a tree trunk or fallen over trunk. Yeah, they are coming in to greet each other. Um, Just a fantastic, fantastic scene. Um, There they go. And then finally, there's my edit of that. Um, So yeah, it was a lot of fun uh, being in this sighting. Nonetheless, Let's jump back to the photograph that I'm going to be editing for you today. Now I just need to find it again. Um, I think it was this one. There we go. Now, obviously, I have edited this photograph before, but I've reset it um, because I would like to show you guys my process. Nonetheless, as you can see, uh, and this is why we like raw photography, folks, because when we go back to the photograph now, have a look at the sky, have a look at how quote unquote blown out it is Um, and let's see what we can do about that anyway let's jump back into it so up here in the sky is what I was talking about so have a look up there if we have a look at our histogram we can see it's basically clipped but I can tell you now that there's a lot that we can still do up there so let's start off with a little bit of masking I always like to start my photo edits with masking first and foremost let's get the subject masked off let's get the background the sky as many things as we can mask off Um, of the big things that we can mask off straight off the bat. Let's get them going. So we're going to click on our little icon over here. We're going to select subject, let the laptop do its thing. And we can see that um, as far as masking off a subject goes, that's pretty terrible. Nonetheless, let's delete that mask and um, not duplicate. Let's delete it. Let's start off with background. Let's see what happens there. All right. So we can see, obviously, the background is going to find everything other than the tree trunk there and that little window over there. Um, So this is good. It basically shows us a lot of the time that the AI masking that's built into Lightroom is not foolproof. It's not perfect. Obviously, when you have a beautiful silhouette of an elephant with a sunset behind it, it's going to mask that thing pixel to pixel. Um, But with a shot like this, things can get a little bit tricky. Let's see how it does with the sky. I think with the sky, we'll probably get a lot more success. There we go. Um, And I think we will basically leave that one where it is. We're then going to come in and we're going to brush our leopard. We're going to brush the leopard along with this fallen over tree um, so that we have sort of the same plane. And then what we'll do after that is we'll take that mask there and we will duplicate and invert that. So 
let's see how this goes. So grab yourself a brush, have a look on the right hand side here. Obviously, you know, I like to work with Feather basically on 100% all the time, but flow and density are very important here. What we want is to mask off this leopard and the tree trunk. Um, not perfectly. I'm a big advocate of the dirty brush and actually having brushes go in and out of lines just to make sure that things sort of feel like they are blending into each other, not just this hard line. So let's jump straight into it. I'm going to turn down the flow and density a little bit here. I like to sort of work between 75 and 100. 100 is very hard. So let's go to 85. Um, it seems close to 100 um, in terms of its percentage, but you know, 86 is fine. But it's not, it actually hits quite softly. So let's start off with uh, a little bit of, of um, zooming in on this. Sorry, I'm using my trackpad today. Usually I, 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 I use a, mo um, a mouse, but nonetheless, let's zoom into 100%. Let's get rid of our, our brush quickly so that we can zoom into where we need to be. Let's close all of these panels down. Let's get this leopard as big on the screen as we possibly can. I don't think we need to be at 100. Let's maybe go to something like 66 or even 50 just so we can get a general idea of where this kitty cat is sitting. Right, so let's go back, let's grab that brush again. It should have saved, there we go, 85, 86. So we're all good. And now what I like to do is I use two hands when I'm brushing on a trackpad like this, one to just simply hold the click and the other one to draw on the trackpad. Now obviously if you're a Mac user, uh, it works a lot better on your trackpad. Some of the higher end Windows laptops have a very good trackpad too and you can get away with it. But as I say, generally speaking, I like to work with a big old mouse and that helps a lot. However, today, because the mouse makes a lot of noise on the tables and so forth, <clears throat> I thought I'd just edit with my bare hands. Can you believe it? Anyway, let's jump back into the photograph and let's start masking, holding with my left hand down and just basically coloring. Now, remember with my right hand. So remember what I said, we are just going to be doing essentially what I like to refer to as the dirty mask. If you've been guided by me before, you'll know very well what I'm talking about when I say the dirty mask. Um, I find people get way too carried away and trying to make sure that their masking, their brushing is perfect and everything's stunning and in line and so forth. But really, you don't need to do that after having done this now for long enough. And um, I, I tend to think I can edit a photograph or two. I tend to think I can take a photograph or two as well. Obviously, this one's a little bit jack because she was in the, in the shade, in the forest. The sun wasn't out. It was overcast this day. But hey, all I'm doing is making excuses now. Nonetheless, let's have a quick look. So if we come up here, uh, my ISO is only 250, but you can see that this photograph is still not tack. It's not exactly noise free, even though that's a fairly low ISO. Nonetheless, you can also see that I was shooting at a 2.8 and with a shutter speed of one over 800, which means that it was fairly dark in this environment at this point in time. So you've got to try and kind of find the best mixture of those settings for the given light. Obviously, you want to bring in enough light, but you also have to remember that you are shooting in RAW and that you can bring things back. And I can guarantee you in this photograph, we're going to bring things back beautifully. Now let's, let's jump back into it. Um, let's mask off the trunk, carry on. Um, a lot of these cool little textured details are going to come out beautifully. Um, don't be scared to go over the leopard itself. Um, and let's quickly get in there and then we'll do a quick reposition. Um, so as you can see, quick, quick brushing guys. Don't sit there for four hours trying to get your brush right. It's, it's going to give you not much of a change. Brush over these little lines down here. We're not going to do much to them. They already stick out like sore thumbs um, over the, the tree trunk and so on. Right, let's come up here. Let's move back down the, um, the tree trunk. There we go. Let's close that again. It should just disappear by itself. There we go. So I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger. That's two fingers and pinch. So two fingers like this on your trackpad and just draw up or down. And that will make your trackpad, your, your brush bigger or smaller. So let's carry on. Um, going to get it all. Don't have to worry too much about the darks. We're not going to do much with darks here. We're basically just going to play with texture, highlights, a little bit more exposure, those sort of things. Um, and uh, as I say, go over the lines here and there. And what I mean by that is where that trunk basically meets the grass back there. Let's go over that because we want to blend. We don't want to have a tree trunk that kind of looks ridiculously well exposed against a background that's not ridiculously well exposed. You can see it. You can see it in your photographs on Instagram and I don't want you to do it anymore. So let's try and keep things natural and beautiful. Of course, everyone's welcome to their own style. I'm just playing. Anyway, let's quickly move a little bit further down. Over there, that should disappear, hopefully. I don't know, Lightroom sometimes, you know. One of those things. Anyway, here we go. Let's quickly do this. Sorry, guys. I know you are basically just watching me color in a tree trunk right now, which is 
never too enjoyable, but hey, uh, at least you get the gist of it. Especially if you're a new wildlife photographer uh, or new to the sort of scene, um, you know, seeing these sort of things in action is uh, is pretty cool because when I first started, the, you know, to find good wildlife editing videos and photography videos and things like that was near impossible. Anyway, there we go. I think we've got the tree trunk done. Um, as I say, we, we don't have to be too crazy about it. Let's get in there. Let's do the leopard. Um, so let's start a new brush. I know I said we were going to do them all on the same brush, but hell, why not? Let's just quickly make it a bit smaller. We're going to hit with the same hardness. Once again, as I say, we do not have to be all crazy and get every whisker down to the pixel. Let's just get this leopard mask. And the results after this will be just fine. They'll be great. Um, and uh, believe me, as someone that has done the down to the pixel wire masking for hours on end in the past um, and seen little benefit from it, um, you can trust me. Uh, nonetheless, if it is your style and you're kind of one of those fine RT people that really wants to have everything, there you go. I'm just quickly making the brush a little smaller just so we can get the ear there. Obviously, I'm not going to act like a gorilla when I say that we must draw over the lines and so forth, but, you know, here we go. Let's make it a bit bigger. Let's get that paw just straight down the line. Pop, done. Um, let's just make sure that belly's done a bit more. And then the tail. Remember, click with your left. Draw with your right. Why are we going so slow? My new MacBook M whatever processor. Um, okay, so there we go. We've kind of got our leopard. Let's let's quickly uh, mask off a little bit further down there. No, that was a bad mask. That's a little bit too far over the line, folks. Um, let's go a little bit bigger. Why are we lagging? Crazy computer. Anyway. There we go. So let's uh, let's get that little bit of a pour there. Cool. Let's zoom out on that quickly. Let's fit. Close this panel down again. We can see our leopards there. Um, and we can see that we have also have that mask there. So what I want to quickly do is um, just duplicate and invert this mask. So let's do that. We're then going to quickly just go in on that mask. We're going to select it. We're going to subtract from it. Oh, wait, wrong mask. Mask 3. Wait, where is mask? There, this one. Okay, so we've got this um, mask two inverted. Um, let's quickly subtract from that, grab the brush, the same thing, and let's quickly dirty brush this, uh, this leopard out of there. Now remember, we're going to be doing some pretty heavy brush work on the leopard itself. So this is what I mean by dirty brush, but folks, don't get too carried away. All right, so there we go. We've got our brushes sorted. We can turn our brushes off now just so we can have a look at the actual images. We've got our brushes. Let's start off with what I like to do um, for color photography because I'm a big color photographer. Um, I do like taking a bit of black and white here and there. Who doesn't? But um, really what I like to try and do is get nice saturation, vibrancy out of my images. Um, and uh, I hope you like it. I hope a lot of people like it. I tend to. Anyway, let's jump back in. So let's go quickly here to Vibrance. Let's pump up the Vibrance a little bit. Click on there. I'm going to use my up and down keys. Um, on Windows, it's left and right. On Mac, it's up and down. And I like to always inject about 15% uh, Vibrance in and then give a little bit of saturation. So just a little bit, um, fairly negligible. Um, then what I want to do is come down here. I'll enable the profile correction. Now, I don't always enable profile correction, and that's why I don't have it set to automatically do it when I import photographs. Um, a lot of the time I find that leaving that unenabled uh, actually helps with the vignette, with the feel, with the size, all sorts of things. So, yeah, anyway. Um, so now that we've done that, what we want to do is give it a post-crop vignette. I love using a vignette, so let's drop that down to 20. Um, we can go a little bit further, but when we start getting that rounding effect, obviously that's where we don't want to, you know, you don't want it to be quite obvious that you've done a vignette. Uh, but you do want to have a vignette. So let's drop it a little bit down to 20. Cool. I know the leopard's looking kind of goofy, but we're going to get there. She's masked. Um, and then, right, I come down to calibration here. And what I usually like to do is to give each one of these RGB. 
Now, the way you need to think about it is that your sensor is an RGB sensor. And what we're doing is we're calibrating the reds, the greens, and the blues within that. Remember, all the, those three colors are responsible, essentially, for making all the, 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 the colors within the photograph. So let's jump in there. Let's quickly calibrate them. Now, you can be wacky with these things and, ooh, you know, make things look like mustard or whatever it is. Let's double-click to recenter. What I usually do is start off with plus five on each. And whatever I go up on one, I'll go up on the other. Um, so there we go. We can see that that's already injected a little bit of warmth in. We've also starting to get a little bit more out of the sky, which is cool. Not a lot at this point in time. Right. So now that we've done a couple of things, um, let's jump back in here. Let's start off onto our mask is what I mean. And let's start off with the sky. Um, so with the sky, there's various ways that you can approach a sky. Um, obviously, if there's a dramatic clouds and all sorts of things, then you want to edit for those clouds. If there's a blowout like I've got here, we want to try and bring it back down to earth. We want to give it some definition out there. We want to give it some blue. We want to see if there are actually clouds out there um, and uh, and work with it from there. So the first thing I would do with the blown out sky is drop the highlights straight away. Boom. All right. So see that change. This is why we shoot in RAW, folks. All right. So because it allows us, shooting in RAW allows us to expose for our leopard, our subjects and so forth and still be able to recover to a certain extent some of the detail from the blowouts or the um the blackouts that you might have so um, let's go back let's drop our highlights watch this i'm going to drop it just simply straight from zero to 100 straight off the bat there we go we've got a beautiful sky coming to the fore there um, now let's drop down to temperature here obviously we want there to be some blue but we don't want it to be like candy floss blue bubblegum blue whatever kind of blue you want to call it. But we want to be quite, with a little bit of finesse here, we want to take the temperature down on the sky. All right, so we see that just getting a little bit blue. The blue starts to pop beautifully against the green. And we basically want to push it until it's nice and vibrant, but not fake looking. So there we go. We got it. I think somewhere around there is going to be cool. Um, and then we can, you know, I always like to play a little bit with texture and clarity. It's not to say that I always add it to every single photograph, but I will definitely play with something like clarity out here in the sky. Um, because, you know, if we womp it all the way up, you can see it doesn't do a lot on this situation. But take it from me, folks. Clarity is one of those sledgehammer sliders. And generally speaking, it's a horrible thing to work with. It, uh, it, it adds a lot of contrast. It doesn't just do clarity. It adds a lot of contrast. Blacker, blacks become blacker. Whites become white. It's usually a no-no for me, but a little bit of clarity goes a long way. If you're one of those people that slides it all the way up to 100 because you think it makes your photograph look sharper and better, um, try to dial it back just a little bit. But, you know, all right, each to their own, really. Um, so let's go back down to zero on clarity and let's just drag it up to something, you know, something around. Because I just want to add a bit of texture and just see what we can get there. So let's give it a little bit of like 19, 20 clarity. Let's give it a little bit of texture out there. I mean, we can want the texture. You can see there's not a lot of texture out there because it is shot at 2.8. That sky is basically just a blur as far as the camera is concerned. Let's give it a little bit. Give it a little bit of dehaze because dehaze can often see that crazy stuff. Watch out for de dehaze too. But let's give it definitely up to about 10. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. Now, what we can do, because we want to see what we've done, we can turn this mask on or off and on, off and on. So pretty cool. Pretty cool what we've managed to achieve there. And once again, when I, when I open that up or, or show the overlay, you can see that large amounts of the sky actually haven't been caught. And this is where people get all crazy and they want to get in there and mask off all these little bits around the twigs and so forth. And seven years later, they might be done. They might not be done. Nonetheless, if I turn this mask, turn the overlay off, and we turn that mask on and off. Can you really see a difference there? Now, I'm not saying that every single photograph, you can just get away with this sort of stuff. But for the most part, you can. <laughs> Pretty fun. Nonetheless, let's jump back in. Let's get our little leopard or, or uh, the tree trunk on the go here. So there's our leopard. Um, we want to initially give her definitely some more exposure. So we're just going to go up with exposure. We don't have to get fancy with it. Let's go up with exposure. But you see, we're adding quite a bit because we shot her dark trying to save the sky. So I've added 50. So 0.5 of a stop up. Let's go down to whites now. And let's give her a nice strong bit of whites. See, we can womp it all the way up. And she starts to stick out a little bit like a candle. Um, so let's give her a little bit. We're going to dial back those whites now by bringing the blacks down. So we're just going to introduce back into her that little bit of contrast. Um, you got to be careful. Obviously, we can make her look real goofy. Um, but really what we want to do, bring it down a little bit. Let's bring the shadows up on her a little bit just so we deal with that. And in fact, what I want to do is just quickly have a look at that. Yeah, that looks fine. Gives her a nice little ridge of darkness along her back there, which is pretty, pretty cool. 
Okay, we're gonna go in and probably mask her face too. So let's let's give her a little bit more exposure. Yeah, actually I'm happy with it at 50. Um, and then let's grab our tree trunk. All right, there it is. Really all I wanna do with the tree trunk here is add some texture. This is one of the places where um, it can work quite nicely. Add some texture, give it a little bit of clarity. You know, just give it a little bit more oomph. Give it some the same sort of exposure as the leopard. Um, not too much. Yeah, let's give it a little bit of white and down a little bit on the blacks just to bring that contrast back in. Let's go back to our main photograph here, back to global settings so we're not on a mask anymore. And we're going to give the whole image one click up on exposure. Okay, let's go back to our mask. And the reason I do that is just to bring everything back out. Um, so every once in a while, I'll go do that. Generally speaking, at the end of an edit, I will, my last, very last step at the end of an edit is to give the entire photograph one click up on exposure. Just point 10, boom, brings everything back to life, makes everything pop a little bit more and just balances things a little bit more. At least I find. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's go back to our, uh, our background here. Now the sky has been somewhat fairly well exposed. So um, I don't think, you know, what we do to this mask now, we're going to test it. We're going to see how much effect it has on the, uh, the sky. But generally speaking, we're not going to do too much. Let's give it a little bit of, of, of warmth. All right. So you can see there straight away, I'm going to center that warmth again. So we back down, let's turn the overlay off and let's give it some warmth. There we go. So you can see the sky is still looking beautiful and it actually looks a little bit more natural as you do this. Not so candy floss uh, blue. Nonetheless, there we go. We've got it. Now, what I would like to do is also play a little bit with the tint. Maybe just green it up a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Cool. And then let's just play with the saturation. Just a couple of clicks up. Okay. So now what we've done is we have essentially, let's turn it off and on. We've given the photograph just a little bit more life and a little bit more depth, if you know what I mean. Like some more warmth. Anyway, let's put it back on. Okay. Back to our main global settings. Let's quickly play with greens across the entire image. Um, so we can be quite heavy. Greens is one of those ones that's not too much of a sledgehammer. I mean, you can see I'm going from extremes here. Look at that. Um, let me show you another sledgehammer. Oranges. Woo. Sledgehammer. So be careful with your oranges. Generally speaking, if I work with orange and yellow, yellow is a sledgehammer as well. Boom. Mustard. Um, what I'll usually do with those two is basically give them plus five, maybe plus ten, because you start up, start looking real weird. Anyway, let's give it a little bit of green. Lovely. Let's give some oranges a little bit up. Plus five. Let's give, oh, sorry, yellows. Let's give oranges plus five. Let's go back up. Let's rebalance with a little bit of exposure again. Um, and we're starting to look pretty cool. Right. One thing I did want to do to the leopard. I left her too early. Come back down. Let's give her the texture that she's deserving. Now, it can work a lot of the time when you are this far zoomed out on a photograph that you can just warm the texture up to make your subject stand out really nicely. And this is the main reason why I decided to mask the, the leopard uh, independently of the tree trunk so that I could warm up her texture and just see what happens because you don't want her to be the same amount of texture as the trunk that she's lying on. She's going to get lost. Um, so let's see what happens. Texture all the way up. And there we go. We kind of have her sticking out. Now, let's quickly do a zoom in test and just make sure you know, what, what she's looking like. All right. Looking pretty cool. Tree trunk's looking pretty cool. She's looking all right. Um, what we can do is, uh, let's go back to, we are on global settings. Let's mask off um, and sharpen. So what I'm doing here is I'm clicking on the masking one, clicking and holding, clicking option on my keyboard, and then just dragging. And what I want to do is try and get some real fine lines just around the leopard. That's showing you where your camera was primarily focusing at the time. Um, so it can show you all those sharp lines. And what we're going to be doing is essentially accentuating all those white lines that you see there. So you can see there are white lines around the leopard. Obviously, we, we don't want to sharpen the background and stuff like that. But really, where the leopard is, all those beautiful spots and rosettes, that's what we want to sharpen. So let's leave it there at a full 100. Let's bring the amount up to about 65. I generally work between 65 and 80. Not too much higher than that because it starts to look a bit chewy. Um, so let's bring that up to about 65 and then let's bring our radius up to, to about 1.8. Now, radius is essentially broadening those white stripes or those white lines that you see there. Okay. So the amount is essentially the hardness and then the radius is how much you are broadening them by. Um, cool. Let's quickly zoom out again and have a look at how we're looking and let's have a look at where we've come from and where we're going. So Looking a little bit goofy at this point in time, but looking pretty cool nonetheless. Um, so yeah, let's jump back in on her. Where are you? There she is. And let's drop those whites because they are looking a little bit too punchy. All right. Um, and then let's 
zoom in on her face and let's give her face her all, own whole mask because the face is looking a little bit dark. So once again, clicking with my left, drawing with my right. There we go. Let's get right up onto the ear there, get around the skull. And there we go. All right, let's take the exposure up. Bring her face onto a similar exposure as her body. Not much more to do there. Let's zoom out and um, let's have a quick look. So that little mask that I just added is doing that. That's off, that's on. So just bringing her back up to the foreground. Okay, let's bring the exposure down on the whole image again. Um, actually, I like, kind of like it up. And um, yeah, we are basically almost there. I mean, for some reason, it didn't. she didn't come out as sharp as I was hoping, you know, when you take these shots. But this is shot on, I think, a D850 um, and, uh, and a Z9. Uh, a D850 and a 300. Um, oh, let's go back to here. Let's have a quick look. This was shot on the Z9, on the Z9. So, yeah, it's one of those things with the Z9. It's, uh, the image quality is not as great as the D850. Um, but, yeah, and I think this was also shot in the 70 to 200. Yeah, if we have a look up there, 70 to 200. Nonetheless, can whinge and whinge all we like, but really for face value, it's a, it's a very nice photograph. Um, so, yeah, the only one that's going to inspect your photograph is you. Um, right, so there we go. We kind of have our photograph. All I want to do now is just play with a couple of things here and there um, and, and make sure that's pretty cool. Let's denoise her. Um, now, it seems a bit strange to denoise something that's only got an ISO of 250, but really, you know, when it's needed, it's needed. Generally, when I do this denoise, AI denoise, I'll just let the AI tell me how much it needs to be done by. Um, you got to be careful of denoise because you actually lose a fair bit of of detail and so forth when you do it. Um, so yeah, just be cautious folks. Don't don't get too far down the denoise rabbit hole. A little bit of noise is actually pretty cool for your photographs. Noise is what produces sharpness, contrast, you know, all those sorts of things, the blacks, the whites, it's all noise. It's all, you know, little pixels lighting up in different shades there. Um, so yeah. Anyway, okay, so he's busy creating our new DNG, which is essentially just a, a new raw folder of the same f photograph. Um, just with all the edits involved as well as the denoising involved. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's have a quick look at other photographs while we wait for that. Um, or, or let's go back to that one quickly and have a look um, where it is that we've come from and where, we, where we're going. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, pretty chuffed with that. Might work on a little bit more of the, on a little bit, on the temperature a little bit more. Um, and, uh, yeah, take it from there. Anyway, there we go. We've denoised now. Let's go up. Let's give her a little bit more exposure, the whole frame a little bit more exposure. And what I do want to do is actually just bring down the temperature on the whole frame a little bit. There we go. So we're keeping a lot of that temperature on the background. Um, there we go. That's starting to look a little bit better. So we brought it down a significant amount, probably about 350 or 400. I can't remember what it was. I think 5,500. Um, and yeah, let's quickly go down here. I want to give it a little bit more vignettes. Nah. Nah, it was good at 20. There we go. And um, yeah, I think that is most probably where I would leave it, uh, you know, for this particular edit. Um, it was a fun shoot. We had a, a great morning with these cats. Uh, when we initially got there, they were all playing with each other. The mom, the two daughters, rolling around, running through bushes, up trees, down trees. I think the one even jumped down a tree on uh, sort of, hit the bonnet of our vehicle, jumped onto the ground. I mean, they were just crazy. They're lovely, lovely cats. And really, if you are looking for a new safari destination to um, really appreciate, if you're someone that is quite experienced with safari and you're looking for that new, uh, pretty exciting safari destination to go to, the Lower Zambezi will not let you down. It is super, super cool. We run a couple of, um, or we run just one uh, scheduled safari to the Lower Zambezi. It's called the Treasures of the Lower Zambezi. And it's really cool. You can expect a fair bit of canoeing out on the waters, hippo, on the water, hippos, elephants. Maybe a cat will come down to drink, but lots of cool birds, lots of beautiful situations, sunsets, sunrises, and so forth. And then when you're in the forest on just a normal game drive, driving around that particular environment, even when you're not seeing things, it's pretty friggin' cool, man. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, there's elephants galore. There's uh, a good pride of lions in the forest. There's leopards galore, apparently. There's wild dogs, if you're lucky. Uh, when we were there, the wild dogs were there and they were denning. Um, so we did see them. A fair bit they came out and hunted we had a couple of kills um, 
and, and some really cool stuff happen. Um, so yeah, nonetheless, folks, I hope you really enjoyed this. If you have any comments, please feel free to post them below and we'll get back to you. Uh, and if you haven't yet uh, already yet subscribed, please do subscribe to our channel. We like to do these sort of videos um, as often as we can. Obviously, we are working guides that move in and around Africa and other places around the world fairly often. Uh, but we do like to try and keep quality content coming your way as often as possible. So if it is something you enjoyed, please hit the subscribe button and post your comments if you have them. Anyway, see you in the next one, folks. Cheers.